Hi, second graders. Welcome back to the Changing Landforms Unit. So we actually skipped lesson 3.4 because a lot of it we were not able to do with the materials we have at home. So we're moving on to lesson 3.5, which is the end of unit assessment. Okay, so we've been investigating how erosion can cause a big change to the cliff without people noticing. So today we're going to write our explanations about erosion. So we're gonna use the, hand, the handbook of land and water to find evidence to support how small changes add up to bigger changes over time. So what I want you guys to do is just jot down some of your ideas in your packet really quickly. It does not need to be in full sentences because we will be creating um, our written responses together, but just write down some of your ideas from last lesson that you remember of how small changes add up to bigger ones over time. Okay, so now we're gonna think back to our mountain model and that it looked similar to that. That's when we had our cotton balls and we were removing them from the plate. So thinking back to our mountain model, what evidence can we use to support that small changes add up to bigger changes over time? So again, I'm gonna let you pause the video and jot down some of your ideas and it does not need to be in full sentences. It can be just a quick thing, um, but just to get you started thinking so that when we start writing our scientific explanation, you guys will have some ideas. Okay, have your ideas changed about how landforms erode since the beginning of the unit and what evidence caused you to think this? So maybe at the beginning we didn't even know what the word erode meant. Maybe we thought that we could see ch changes um, really quickly like in a day. So what I want you to do is again pause your video and then just write down if your ideas have changed at all since the beginning of the unit and if so what evidence do you have to support why? Okay, so now we're gonna be moving on to writing scientific explanations. So what is a scientific explanation? So a scientific explanation, it answers a question. It is based on science ideas that you have already learned. It is shared with somebody and it uses science words or vocabulary from the texts that we've read, um, from our slides or from any of our models. So first we're going to write scientific explanations. So let's review the directions and the question. So the directions for our explanation is we're going to write a scientific explanation that answers the question below. How did the recreation center's cliff erode without the, direct the director noticing? So we already wrote the first sentence stem for you guys um, because it's really important in a scientific explanation to be answering and writing in complete sentences. So our first sentence stem that we have there is the cliff eroded without the director noticing because blank. So I want you guys to pause the video on this slide so you can copy down the sentence stem that we have for you at the beginning. And this is just a way for us to get started writing our explanation in a full sentence. Okay, when scientists write explanations to answer questions, they support their answers with ideas they learned while reading and investigating. There are many places to look for ideas to help you complete your explanations. You can look back at the packets that we've completed throughout the chapter. Um, you can think back to our mountain model. You can go back to the video for the handbook of land and water. All of these are places for you to get some ideas um, to write your scientific explanation. So what I'm gonna have you guys do is you guys are going to be completing your explanation. You can refer to the guidelines as needed. You guys can also go back to any of your old packets, um, any of the old videos if you need to, to get some evidence for what to write here. Um, and then after that, we will check back in and discuss our answers and move on to the last piece of this lesson. Hi second graders, so we are back for our last part of lesson five and we are going to be diagramming cliff erosion. So we've explained why the director did not notice the cliff eroding. Now we need to decide whether the recreation center should be closed immediately. So next we will create diagrams to include with our explanations. The diagrams will help the director decide whether to close the recreation center right away. So this worksheet is in your packet and you guys will be completing it on your own, but let's go ahead and read through the directions together. So direction one is look at the first picture in the diagram below and read its caption. So when I'm looking at the picture, 
It's showing a picture of the cliff and the caption says, now the flagpole is closer to the edge of the cliff than it was a long time ago. So that is what the cliff looks like today. Number two says complete the second picture in the diagram and complete the caption to explain how the cliff will look one year from now. Be sure to draw the cliff where you think it will be in one year and the water. So in this box right here, you're gonna use what you guys have learned so far in this chapter about erosion to think about what that cliff might look like in one year. And then you will complete the sentence stems. In one year from now, the cliff will look blank. This is because blank. When you're completing the captions, make sure that you are thinking about all the different sources that we can use um, to pull information from, such as the handbook of land and water, um, our mountain model, any of the things you've learned throughout the chapter to help you answer that question. Because just like in our scientific explanations, you guys want to be making sure that you're using evidence when you answer a question. And the last one, complete the third picture in the diagram and complete the caption to explain how the cliff will look 1 million years from now. Be sure to draw the cliff where you think it will be in 1 million years and the water. So in this bottom one, you're going to be drawing a picture again, but this time it's going to be focusing on 1 million years from now. So 1 million years is a really, 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 really long time. So um, keep that in mind when you're drawing the picture of the cliff. And again, when you are completing the caption, make sure that you're using evidence from one of your sources to help you answer. So this diagram looks different from the others that we've completed. Instead of showing how the cliff got to be the way it is today, it shows what the cliff will look like in the future. So we're not totally sure what it's gonna look like. We're making kind of a guess, but we're using information that we've learned so far to help us make a more educated guess. So you guys can go ahead and pause this video and complete the diagrams and the captions on your own. If you are finished up and you have something at home you can share and talk it through with, um, do that before you guys hop back on the video. Okay, so now that you guys completed your diagram, we are going to go ahead and answer this next question. So should the director close the recreation center right away? Why or why not? When you're answering this question, I want you to keep in mind what we know about erosion. So again, remember that we've learned, and especially we focused on it in the last lesson, um, we've learned that small changes are hard to see or notice, um, but these small changes add up over time to a bigger change that will be more noticeable. So make sure that you're keeping that in mind when you're answering the question. You can go ahead and pause this video and write the answer in your packet or talk to somebody at home or just think about it in your head. We've been thinking about stability and change in ways that are similar to how many scientists think about stability and change. So we found evidence of small, slow changes to the cliff, even though it seems stable from day to day. So um, we're going to be learning a lot more in the next couple lessons about stability and change, but to get you guys thinking before we move on to chapter four, I want you guys to try and think of some real world applications to this. So remember, stable means it's seen something that seems like nothing's happening to it or nothing's changing. So what is something at home that seems stable from day to day? Do you think that there might be slow or small changes happening to that thing and why or why not? So go ahead and talk to somebody at home about your thoughts or just quickly think of an example in your head. It could be something like your backyard, um, the concrete, maybe a table in your house, um, really anything in your house that you can think of um, and think about are there changes being made to it. Okay, so that is the end of lesson five. So we will see you guys back for chapter four to finish up our changing landforms unit.